In this video, we're going to introduce the idea of what is a system of equations. We're not going to do a ton of solving. Um, we're not going to look at solving by substitution or elimination or graphing. We're just going to get a good foundational idea for what a system of equations actually is. So if I look at this, here's going to be our first example. And so sometimes in college, you're going to get quizzes that aren't always worth 100 points. And sometimes they'll be worth some other value. And so suppose you're taking a six-question quiz, so it has six questions on it, and that it's worth 15 points altogether, and it's made up of true-false questions and multiple-choice questions. True-false questions are one point each. Multiple-choice questions are four point each. And so the question is, how many of each type of question are there? How many true-false questions and how many multiple-choice questions? And what we have is there's really two criteria. One is, is our, our total number of questions has to be six. And then our second criteria is that has to be worth 15 points. So what let's do is let's first figure out all the ways that we can have six questions. And so um, what you could have is you could have zero true-false and six multiple-choice. You could have one true-false and five multiple-choice. You could have two true-false and four multiple-choice, and you see the pattern. And that pattern goes all the way down to where we might have six true-false and zero multiple-choice. So as we can see, there are a lot of different ways to have six total questions, but here's the kicker they also have to total 15 points. So let's kind of forget about this over here, and let's just figure out ways that, with this going on, we could have 15 total points. And so first you might be thinking, okay, well, if these true-false questions are one point each, you can see, well, then, then maybe we could just have 15 true-falses and zero multiple choices. And then you might think, well, okay, well, if I do 14 true-falses, that would be 14 points. But then, you know, if I add even one multiple choice, it's not going to give me 15 total points. So you might go down and think, well, well the next option would be 11 true-falses, because that would be 11 points off of the true-false questions that are one point each. And then if I had one multiple choice question, that would give me the other four points I need to give me 15 total. And then if you keep this pattern going, you might see that, okay, I, I could have seven true-false, and that would be seven uh, total points. And then you need eight points off of the multiple choice question, so that would be two. And then the pattern's gonna continue. You'd have three and three, um, and I think that might end up being the last one that works. But what we see is this, and I'm gonna keep saying this over and over. There's a lot of ways to have six multiple choice questions. There's a lot of solutions to this situation. There's also a lot of ways to have 15 points. There's a lot of solutions to this situation. But what is the overall answer? In other words, what is the solution to the system well, that would be the value that satisfies both. So if you're looking, you say, okay, this has six questions, but I also see the same relationship over here. If we have three and three, that gives me six total questions and that gives me 15 total points. So that is the solution to the system here. Now let's look at another example. We're going to try to develop this intuitive idea of a system of equations. And so in this one, we have John. He scored 16 points in a basketball game, and he made seven baskets, and we're assume there's no free throws. So they're all two and three pointers, right? So let's first look at all the ways there are to have seven baskets. John might be like a guard that never goes into the lane, but he shoots a whole bunch of three pointers. So he might have had seven three pointers, or maybe he just had one layup and six three pointers. And then you could have had two two-pointers, and five three-pointers, and you can kind of see the pattern. And that pattern continues all the way down to maybe, you know, maybe he's just a big old postman. Maybe he's Shaquille O'Neal, and he had seven two-pointers, but he's never going to shoot a three. So these are all the different ways to have seven baskets. You can see there's a lot of ways to have seven baskets, but let's bounce over here and look at our other criteria, which is how does he get the 16 points? What combination of these would give him 16 points? And so you might be thinking, okay, well, hmm, he might have had eight two-pointers, because eight times two is 16, and then that would mean no three-pointers, right? And then you might be thinking, okay, well, what if he had seven two-pointers? Well, seven times two is 14, hmm, but then to even add one more three-pointer, 14 plus three would be 17. So there's no way for him to have seven two-pointers, right? And then you might think six, and you, you know, if we went through the logic, that wouldn't work, but you'd five, find out that five does work. If he had five two-pointers, that would give him 10 points off of two-pointers. That means he only needs six more points. So five times two plus two times three would give him the 16. And then you might try, okay, well, if there's four two-pointers, that would give him eight total points. But there's no way to get the other eight points from threes, so I don't like that. And you would keep the pattern going. You might find that, oh, two two-pointers would be four points. 
and then that means he needs 12 points from three-pointers. 2 times 2 plus 4 times 3 would give you the 16. And then you keep going through, and I think, I think this ends up being the, the options that we have. So, so what we see is there's a lot of ways to make seven baskets. There's a lot of ways to make 16 points. But your question is, what's the solution to both? What did John actually do in this game if this is true? And the only way for both of these things to be true, the only solution to both equations or both uh, situations is you see this 5 and 2 combination. If these were lines that we graphed, this would be the point that's on both lines. So he made five two-pointers and two three-pointers. Let's look at one last example. And in this last example, I'm going to try to slightly get us a little bit closer to the algebra that we're going to do later. So let's say we have two numbers. Let's call those two numbers x and y. And let's say they have the sum of seven and a difference of three. And so the question is, what are the two numbers? So if we look at this, um, first we got to know that there's a couple of ways to have a sum of 7, and really this could even go into the negatives. We don't have a, a real-world um, limit on our domain. We could have, like, for example, negative 1 plus 8 would give us 7, right? So there's, a, there's an infinite number of ways to have two numbers add up to get 7, um, but just because I know where I'm going with this question, I'm just going to list a few. Like, I, I know that uh, x could be 0 and y could be 7, because 0 plus 7 is 7. I also know that I could do 1 plus 6, I could do 2 plus 5, and let me just continue this pattern down a little bit. And I've listed out a few. There's actually an infinite number of ways to do this, right? Because we could even get into decimals with this situation. But um, for the purpose of what we're doing here, I've listed a few options, right? And we could represent this algebraically. I could write an equation to describe this because we're just saying that our first number plus our second number equals 7. Now, let's come over here, and let's talk about the difference of 3, okay? So we did our our sum of 7, that's this situation. Now let's do our difference of 3. And so if we're writing two numbers have a difference of 3, difference means subtract, right? So I could, I'm going to pick a random place, but because there's a million different ways we could have two numbers that subtract to give you 3. I could do 100 minus 97, right? Uh, but let's start with 7 minus 4, because that's 3. We also know 6 minus 3 is 3. We know 5 minus 2 is 3. And I could keep listing out a few more. And so I've done just that. I've listed a few options. And if, uh, if I wanted to represent this algebraically, what we would say is algebraically this would be x minus y equals 3. So what we have is we have a system of equations because these are two equations that have the same variables. And so we see there's a lot of ways to satisfy our red equation. In other words, there's a lot of solutions to our red equation. We could say there's a lot of points on the line of our red equation. And we could say the same thing about our green equation. There's a lot of solutions to the green equation. There's a lot of ways to satisfy the green equation. Or in other words, these could all be points on the graph of my green equation. But the question is, what's the solution to the system? The solution to the system is going to be um, what's true for both. And so if we're looking at our situation here, I see that we have one point that is on both. We have one point that's a solution to both. We have one point that's uh, on both lines. We're going to look at it more later, but graphically this would be where this line and this line would intersect at the order pair 5, 2. And so once again, we're trying to inch a little bit closer to this conceptual idea of what a system of equations is, and that's really all I've got here for this video. But just to recap, here's going to be your big idea. The solution to the system is the value that satisfies both equations. In this video, we did a lot of guess and check um, in later videos, we're going to learn how to actually solve these algebraically when it's not so easy to eyeball the solutions.